um, grace, grace to you good people all over the world. Um, Ephesians chapter 3 verses 1 on your bread of life today. And the title is Define Your Field. Define Your Field. And I'm going to read the contemporary version. The Bible says, this is Paul. Christ Jesus made me his prisoner so that I could help you Gentiles. As simple as that. Christ Jesus made me his prisoner so that I could help you Gentiles. That was a field. You Gentiles. Hallelujah. So define, define your field. And what do I really mean? Okay. Now, one thing that I know for certain is that God will give you power over the men he is sending you to. Okay. If he's sending you to the Gentiles like Paul, he'll give you power over them. That's why Paul, Paul had people like the Macedonians and the Corinthians and who did everything within their power, the Philippian church, to support his ministry and everything. But he struggled with the Jews. He struggled with the Jews because he didn't send him to the Jews. He sent him to the Gentiles. So he gave them power over the Gentiles. No wonder it's the Jews who kept on persecuting him because he didn't send him to the Jews. He had no grace, but he had grace for the Gentiles because that was his field. Okay, that was his field. So once your field is defined, that is the place and people, okay, where God is sending you to, God begins to draw them by the inward power. Okay, he begins to draw them by what? That inward power. There will be in them a certain attraction and desire to want to come to you, to sit down to listen to you, or if you're a businessman, to buy your products. There's that desire in them that they'll want to come. They'll want to come. They'll find themselves there. They'll be dragged. There's a way God will drag them into your ministry and they sit under your word. Are you hearing me? Jesus said, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. John 6, 44. So they can't come unless it is God who draws them. But it is God, God firstly sends you before he draws them. He first defines for you that field where he sends you like the way he did with Paul. He sent him to the Gentiles and he drew the Gentiles to him. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So such was the case with Apostle Paul. His field as a minister of the gospel was clearly defined. It was defined. The, 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 the gospel for the Gentiles had been committed to him, of which Paul himself says, God worked effectively in him towards the Gentiles. Galatians chapter 2, verses 7 and 8, you can read it. So it was clearly defined. He says it. So friends, the reason you may not be effective, listen to me, the reason you may not be effective in what you are engaged in could be down to this one thing, you are in a wrong field. And that field could be a job, it could be a country, it could be a relationship, or even a ministry, the church where you are. Are you listening to me? Now, for example, like a church, some, some of you could be in a wrong church, okay? Allow God to define the church you are to be planted because therein is the grace given you to flourish. Psalms 92 verses 13, the Bible says, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. You see how, how it is important to, 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 to clarif seek clarification from God on the church where he is to plant you. In other words, transplanted to God's court, you will grow tall in the presence of God, which presence is all we need in this life. Am I making sense? So, I want to close by saying this. Allow God to define your field. It may take you a while, but wait on God. Don't run before you are sent. For they which are sent are assigned a field and with that field comes power over yourself power over the things you should command and power over men and once that is defined i can guarantee you one thing that the best is yet to come and god bless you